Welcome to this one-to-one -one on Straight Talk. I'm Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say my guest this week is Tommy Johnson, former Celtic striker, Aston Villa, uh, and more than a few clubs in between that as well, Sheffield United. And of course, uh, from a boy from Gateshead, the only one missing there is Newcastle. Um, was it? Said that you've been on Wikipedia, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Uh, Whereabouts is it? Newcastle. Oh, well, Gateshead, Newcastle. No, different. Oh dear me! Does that get Can we you start again? No, does that no. get you into trouble? Oh, aye. Yeah. Why? What's the difference? Oh, he's Sunderland. It's right. over the river. If you're right. born in Newcastle, you're a Geordie. Okay. If you're south of the river, you're not. Well, that's what happens when you come from the west of Scotland and you don't get the differences in the tribalism. Did you always want to play for Newcastle? Of course. Yeah. What happened? No, I could have. Could have went as an apprentice, but I don't know. I went down to Notts County early doors and and loved it. You know, I just. 16 and Notts County were a smaller club if I'd probably better chance of making it or getting in the first team earlier and my trainer thought was if I didn't like it away from home I could always go back yeah and I'm still away. I'm still away <laughs> <laughs> did your family did you did yeah. your family want you to play for Newcastle oh yeah all day I yeah yeah but I just well I know I how it turned out I made the right decision but uh, yeah it was obviously a difficult decision peer pressure as well and as you said family wanted us to play or me mates did but uh, I just thought no if I go away don't make it I'll just come back home but as I said uh, it went all right for a few years I who was the gaffer that convinced you to go to Notts County Jimmy Searle good old Scott yep good mates with Alex for Sir Alex Ferguson and I just went down and you know I was 14 13 14 and just Loved it and, you know, helped doing jobs and by 15 I was going down in school holidays and then playing for the reserves as it was then and, and they offered me an apprenticeship and, and I thought that's where I wanted to start my career. Yeah, I saw a great uh, YouTube video of you with, uh, I think it was a young Mark Draper yeah. uh, and the, t <laughs> the two of you there, um, you know, talking about playing standard you were playing in at the time what was that area like who were the players that were that you were playing alongside so yeah obviously drapes i grew up with drapes you know and then we ended up playing together with villa again uh still speak to him all the time he's still in nottingham craig short chris short dean yates we didn't have a neil warnock came in uh when i, I think i just turned pro and he just got like he is galvanized a team got the players out he didn't want Four players in and we want who were good in the dressing room and you know we got promotion from league one as it is now and then up to the championship and then the next year from the championship into the as premier league as it is now so yeah what was the football like you were playing because everybody has this stigma attached to neil warnock yeah well drapes got told once if he ever dribbled in his own half again he'd be sold so <laughs> that was but gaffer played to our strengths we had we played it was probably like a 4-3-3 at home and then he'd change and, and play a sweeper away from home. So we'd have a big target man up front and then there'd be me and say Kevin Bartlett, Phil Turner either side. And basically it was like a free roll yeah. for you, me. You mentioned uh, Jimmy Cyril, Neil Warnock there. When I look at the, the list of managers uh, that you've worked under, it, it's absolutely incredible. Who had the greatest impact on you? From an early age, it was all different. I went to... Uh, you know, I had uh, the gaff. I keep calling everyone gaffer, so I'm going to have to name them, aren't I? So Neil Warnock, when I went uh, to Notts County, then Arthur Cox, when I went to Derby, Brian Little signed us at Aston Villa, and the first thing he said, he says, I want you to play as like Steve McManaman role. I was like, no, I'm a centre forward, and, and worked out I was. He played us as a ten, and I had a free role. His his man management was brilliant. And then obviously coming up to Celtic with Tommy Burns, even though I, I was his last sign and, and didn't really have a lot of time to work with him before he left the club. Uh, his enthusiasm when I came up before I'd signed and just sat in the, in the dressing room as it was then, I think it must have been about two or three hours just talking what he wanted to do with us and how he's seen his play, where he's watched us. I think the first time he's seen us when I was at Derby. So that was probably three, four years before he actually signed us and kept tabs on us. He was just so enthusiastic uh, working with him and Billy, Billy Stark and, uh, God bless, Frank Connor. And then 
you'll probably go through the managers. I, I, I think I must have had six or seven managers when I was at Celtic, and apart from Tommy, I think the only one who, uh, who I loved, shall I say, or made us feel part of it was uh, Martin O'Neill. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned all those names, and, and by the way, there were uh, more than a few at, at, at Celtic as one came in, didn't work out, failed, and on to the next one. From your perspective, um, when you look at your overall playing career, is there a sense of frustration at Tommy Johnson that everybody was raving about when you were younger, and then that little period of injury seemed to curtail what I thought would have been a, an even better development, although some people would bite their right arm off for, for what you've won and the people you've played for. Yeah, like I always I do things now and in interviews, podcasts, whatever. And if you said at 16, what, what would you do in your career? And if you're right, you'd snap your hands off. You know, yes, I had the injuries. I think the way I look at it is I started Notts County, progressed to Derby. No disrespect to the clubs here, but like progressed to Derby then. Progressed to Aston Villa, then Celtic, and then when you leave Celtic, <laughs> unless you're Henrik and go to Barcelona, like you're, you're going down the way, aren't you, Peter? Yeah. But the injuries, yeah, uh, I get that. Do you know I was there four and a half years, and, and I would have played, even though my goal scoring record is quite good, I think. But yeah, of course I wanted to play a lot more. Do you know, but these things happen, and what can you do? But as I, I go back to it. I've won trophies, you know, I've had a great time. I've played for 19 years as a professional, so yeah, there was a couple of bad injuries in my time at Celtic, and I, I know I should have played more, but I didn't for circumstances. You forget though, when uh, Vim came in, I was fit. So he just didn't like us or yeah. whatever. You know, there, I wasn't part of the squad, and there was a few of us who weren't. Yeah, the strange thing about it is when I think of every time somebody mentions your name to me, I always think optimism. There's a smile comes to my face because you were always kind of a happy, go lucky, positive attitude. Um, was that something that you felt, um, you know, was part of your makeup in the darkest days when you when you were having injuries? Because your lesson. Uh, uh, over the period of your playing career is something that maybe a number of footballers will look at and think, God, if I had those injuries and I'd have hit that, mm. you know, you hit that dark day when you think, am I ever going to kick the ball again? Was there yeah. a moment like that? Oh, definitely. You know, I'd done me knee. It was innocuous. It was, I remember it was against Dunfermline in midweek. I think we had a cup final, the league cup final, a week, 10 days later. And Vim, he, it was players having carrying knocks, there was players suspended, there was players going to be rested for the cup final and I knew I wouldn't be involved but for this particular game I was sub and then I, I went on and then that's the first time I done my knee, I went up for a header, just come down and it went and you just think oh my god I've waited all this time to play and then you go and do your knee and then I think I came back in the pre this was a February, come back pre-season, done all pre-season and then the first game back I think it wasn't, no, sorry, it was in the in the May time. It was a week before the season finished, I yeah. came back. And then I was with Danny, uh, Danny McGrain, doing one-to-one. -one. I mean, he just snapped. Come back from that, had a cartilage operation. Then we had pre-season and done all pre-season. And then we first came back in, I think we were in Holland. And then it totally went. So, so I think in total I was out for a year, which... But we had a great dressing room, you know. Yeah. Yes, I was going in. I think Morton had done his knee a few weeks later. So, and obviously what we had in the dressing room with the players that we had and the camaraderie, you know, there's loads of us still keeping in touch together. But what was I going to do, Peter? Was I going to lie down and let it get the... And I didn't want to be classed as a failure. Yeah, you, you strike know, me as a like, person who's a half glass... Uh, you know, the, the, the glass is half full. Um, that's the first thing. Oh dear, yeah. I'm looking at this. God, I'm from Newcastle. And you ask anyone who's played professional football, you know, that's all every, anybody wanted to do as a kid. Yeah. I was fortunate and to do it. So you can mention injuries, you can mention managers, you can mention not playing. But as I said, if you say to him, would you, there you are, you've had 19 years as a player. You've won this, you've won that, you've played at these clubs. Would you take it? 
Of course you would. Yeah. And of those 19 years that you've mentioned there, I would say the 75% that we're going to talk about, that filled with moments that, again, as, as we talk about people who have dreams, mm. to, to, to win silverware is great. To score a goal that you're forever remembered mm. for, to win the league title is, you know, that, huh? that must have just put it all into perspective it for you. It does. I could have left many a time before at Celtic clubs had come in, obviously not playing under certain managers. And I'm like, no, I went to Everton, which didn't really turn, I was there for two, three months when John Barnes was here. But as I said, like from being an apprentice and then I played at Wembley twice before I was 20 for more, like playoff scoring at Wembley and stuff like that. And you think, oh, this is great. This is going to happen every year. Yeah. But obviously it doesn't work out like that. And as I said, my career just got better and better. And, and as you said, to top it off uh, in 2001, I against St Mirren. First touch was rubbish. First touch was magnificent, <laughs> what you're on about. <laughs> was that set that. up for your <laughs> right Well, <laughs> someone went down the line, Henrik's got the ball. If I'm Henrik, I'm shooting from there. You know what I mean? No, but obviously, the kind of player he was, he laid it into us and uh, yeah, it rolled under my foot. But when you say I'll go like that, when I score, because when it did roll under my foot, you could see the crowd going, <laughs> oh, he would go again, he's missed it again. <laughs> and luckily enough, it fell on me right. Now, uh, God knows how it went in. Yeah. Because there was a bloke on the line and then it's gone through him and under the keeper's legs, but it didn't matter, it just went in. That was the main thing. Still a special moment. And the good thing about it is you had one of those gaffers that, you know, he, he gave people pelters. Martin was one of those guys. Even when I when I see him sometimes in your company mm. and the players, there's that camaraderie. There's that you know cajoling each other and noising each other up about your first touch, but you still scored the goal. <laughs> what was your memories of that day? It got a bit hazy after that. <laughs> I remember my family being up. It was an early kickoff. It was red hot. It was Grand National Day. It's the first week in the April, I think it was. So and we'd all. Obviously, we didn't know we were going to win the league that day, but we'd all doing supporters do that night. So I was down, first and foremost, obviously win the game. I think we played Dundee on the Wednesday, and we knew if we'd won on the Saturday. So I said, 12 o'clock kick-off, red hot. I'm playing. I scored, and then I got a bit of cramp. <laughs> I saw I come off. I'm thinking, don't want anybody else score. Go on, just be nice for a change. <laughs> so, but no, as long as we won the game, it didn't matter. And then it was a Grand National, and I always remember it. We'd had a sweepstake, and I won it, and the horse was Red Marauder. I'm not a gambler, but it's 33 to 1, and I only picked it red because I used to have red air, yep. as you can imagine. That won, and then me and Neil Lennon were down in Ayrshire doing a, a sport uh, dinner. Sports dinner, sports yeah. Sports dinner and all that. And then, like, Johan, Stubbsy, all the other lads were around Glasgow doing their do's as well. So we came back up, and then all you see is... It's green and white everywhere. Yeah. And then we met all the women in town as well afterwards. And it was so I can remember everything about it. Probably not after about 10 o'clock at night. But then next day we went out again. A few of us went out again the next day. And but it was brilliant. Yeah. Aye. And, you, and you mentioned the gaffer. I have spoke, spoke to him the other day. You know, I'm still very, very close to him. And uh, I think he's over in uh, Northern Ireland in a couple of weeks. So I'm meeting up with him then. But he was just his man management. You know, you speak to anybody. And he had good staff. Staff that we trusted, John Robertson, Steve Walford. You know, you had Terry Genoa. And then when I worked with him, with him again at Forest a few, just a few years ago, like scouting for him. So, yeah. but he's, uh, and you can't argue with him. He won the European Cup of Forest twice, you know, won the league. And his management career was unbelievable. And What made him special? I think if he, when he just, from the first moment he walked into the room, there was just that aura about him and you had respect for him. And when he spoke, you listened to him. Players like knowing that they're going to have a part to play. Was that something that, um, from your point of view, another manager comes in, this time there's a wee bit more expectation, to be perfectly honest mm. with you. Celtic fans sensed there was going to be a fair bit of money spent. Yeah. Did you? Was it crucial for you to know that he, he had a part to play with him? Yeah, I, obviously, we have mentioned managers there who just, one who probably didn't think I was a good player and that's why I never played or, but did I have respect for some of them? No, because of the way we were treated. 
and then John Barnes had gone and then Kenny had took over with uh, Tommy Burns had come back in and we won the League Cup and I played, scored against Aberdeen. So you're thinking, great, uh, please give Kenny and Tommy the job. <laughs> you know, that, that was from my perspective, didn't get it. So not a problem. And then when the gaffer come in and I knew John Robertson from Nottingham days and all that. And I thought, yeah, I had one year left on my contract. And I think he just come in and, as you mentioned, there was going to be money to be spent. Chris Sutton came straight in. Uh, Juice, Big Juice came in. Tomo came in. So you could see there was uh, something was happening. I remember the first, I think it was, a we at Dundee United, we won, I think, 2-1. I think Sutton scored and Henrik. And then the following week, I wasn't sub. And I'm thinking, oh, he would go again. So the gaffers brought us in. And he's went, I'm going like this. I'm like, and I went, oh, God, I said, I don't need this. It's the last year of my contract. I said, I've had all this in the past. I said, I just want to be involved and I want to, I want to not, I don't want to, to want to put a, an arm around us, but just let me be, in, I want to be part of it. And basically, I'm like, I'll show you, you know what I mean? And he just sat down, he got sat us down and he went, don't want you to worry, you'll be part of this. And I went, yeah. And he went, yeah. Okay, that'll do for me. That like, must have sent you through the roof. Oh, I because of all. Uh, well, you, you had this way of he, not batter you, but he could have a go at you. But then, but making you ten feet tall as well. Yeah, and we'll probably go on to that when we when we did win the league. You know, he was he's uh, he's just got this way about him where he was brilliant. So I went okay then. Yeah, we'll see how it goes then. And I was, I was part of it. Suddenly got injured, I got in the team. You know, I probably played that season more than, than I played in, in any, any of my time at Celtic. Yeah, and, and of course, special team. Um, you mentioned the players that were there. Um, there was a sense in that side that it was going to take maybe four or five years to catch Rangers, but you, you guys just seemed to, you know, hit the ground running and suddenly, you know, all started to click. Yeah. From the start, Peter, from when I signed, the dressing room was always good, always brilliant. You know, uh, I think then over, over the time I was there, there was a lot more foreigners coming in. And you know, and at first, I think everybody knows the, the story about Henrik and, and Tosh and all that, but that galvanised us. Yeah. Because there was a split. And I think you speak to anybody who was at the time then, who was at the club at the time then, there was a split, but that galvanised us. And that just carried on and on. And Joseph come in and unfortunately we didn't win the league then, you know, and, and, he's, and you just said Rangers were, they were a good team and they had some players, you know, I think Dick, Dick Advocat was in at the time, Walter had been there and they'd, they'd signed some really, really good players and we, and, but when the gaffer came in and we started realising the way he wanted to play and what we were doing in training and, and you know, we just had the confidence that we weren't going to get beat. Yeah. We're going out onto the pitch and saying, right, come on, let's put these to bed in 20 minutes, you know. It didn't always work out like that, but yeah. we, we give us the confidence, and we had confidence in ourselves that we are going to do it. Is that the best team you've ever played in? Um, and do you think it would have, do you think it was a team that would have beaten every team that you've played oh, for before? Question, it's a it? belter, I've just thought about it. I know, uh, <laughs> cheers. It just came out of my head. As I said, like from Knott's League One yeah. to Championship, we had a special way of playing with Neil Warner. And you look at the team then, and the players who've gone on and to do better things it was a hell of a lot. Derby, we spent a lot of money in the championship at that time. Yeah, didn't get promotion. Ironic that we Brian Little was manager of Leicester at the time when we played them in the playoff final. Leicester win. Brian Little goes to Villa and then signs me six months later. You yeah. know, so but if Derby had won, I would have signed a new contract. Would have been in the Premier League. Those sliding doors more. Yeah, oh, it? it's frightening. Yeah. And then, obviously, Villa, we had a, we were fourth and fifth in the league. Well, did, am I right in thinking you'd... Dwight York Dwight was there. Dwight York. Milosevic. Savo Milosevic. Was Saunders there? Lugger. No, Dino was... I signed in the January and Dino left in the summer. Right. But Gallus Southgate, Paul McGrath, Hugo Aguirre, God rest. Yeah. York, Mark Draper, Andy Townsend, Steve Stone, Nigel Spink. That would have been some game. Villa's best side against Celtic. Yeah, because the gaffer, I'm Brian Little Gaffer, played three five two. Oh, it's a match up, isn't it? 
Yeah. And then when Martin comes in and that's the way we played as well. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you think your best position was? I, uh, I love that line there when you said, I had a free roll. Now, free roll to me, <laughs> I can saunter anywhere I want <laughs> in behind those. Was, that's the way it was. It was <laughs> before I'd even signed for Villa, we were sat in the room and, and I was speaking to the gaffer and he went, I don't see you as a centre forward. And I was, what was I? I was 23. And I was like, well, I... You're stubborn, you know. Of course, yeah. I'm a centre forward. All I want to do is score goals. I think when I was an apprentice, I played midfield at Notts County. I played left wing, I played right wing. And then when the, uh, Neil Warnock put us up front and then just do what you want. Derby, I, I started as a winger. Yeah. Gaffer played us as a winger, but then I moved centre forward. And then when I went to Villa, he went, I want you as a 10. And, and he was right. I loved it. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. You scored some screamers. I mean, I think you scored a, a screamer against um, Leicester in a 4 4, um, which was a lovely. Oh, the lob, huh? Your left I, peg. You didn't see the ones I missed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Yorkie scored one goal. I'm two yards from the line. And I've hit the bar. And Yorkie, thank God, had followed up and put it in the net. But you'll ask any of the lads who I played with. Yeah, I, I, just well, used to shoot on sight. I was going to say, like you strikers have got that special um, attitude that if you miss one, there'll be another one coming along I, shortly. I don't shoot. If I don't shoot, I won't score. That was yeah. my motto. And it was even more when I came up to Celtic because you're getting a lot more chances. Yeah. We'll go back to the St Mirren game when we won the league. I must have missed three or four before that, before that one went in. Yeah. Well, listen, the most important one is Ken Douglas used to say, check the record books. You know, <laughs> if it says we won, great, you know. Let me ask you this. Um, you, you mentioned people who lifted you, boosted your, your confidence, um, players. You've got, um, and, and the players that you played with are really, really talented. I mentioned Milosevic, I mentioned the likes of Dwight York, but at Celtic, you know, you had Sutton, you had Larson. You also had Lubo, I mean, Lubo, of all the players. Give me the two or three special ones that you think that was a joy to say I've played with them. Well, Paul McGrath at Villa. Yeah. Never trained. Obviously, he had a few problems off the pitch. Yeah. He used to come in, go on these exercise bike and then join in on Friday and then go out on a Saturday as if, like, the reading, his dodgy knees, the reading of the game was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I find the Paul McGrath story incredible that he could sustain. We always say, how would he have been if he had decent knees? He might not have been the player that he was. Yeah. Was he quick or was it just the yeah, he just read the game. game. Yeah. Once he got into his stride, he was quick. But he was just that split second ahead of knew where the ball was going to go. And he probably admit he, was, he wasn't the best on the ball, but his reading was unbelievable of the game. Yeah. So a great fellow, as well, like a great bloke as well. I'm going to ask you then, this is something that I've asked most of the, the guys um, who've come on uh, to talk about <laughs> their career. Um, and it, it's quite simply, give me your five-a-side team then. Of all the players you've I've played been with. been preempted by Mr Darren Jackson, who I'm yes. over to see this weekend. Gordon Marshall <laughs> he... and Malcolm, Malcolm Mackay have said... <laughs> If you're going on, you'll have to name your five sides. So I'm going, oh my gosh. I said I'd put them three in to start with. But yeah. Who would I have in? Oh dear. Will you... I got asked this at Villa. Yeah. Uh, and did you find yourself swaying towards the guy who's in your so... Villa? You... <laughs> As usual. Uh, and it was Villa, it was Villa players then they asked us for. And I didn't put Macker in because it was five aside. And I said, would he be able to get round? Would his knees be all right? You know what I mean? But you've got to have him in. Who yeah. would have in goal? Probably Bosnich. Yeah. Mark Bosnich. Mark Bosnich's career, the best of it was Villa. Is it that was fair? Right. And then what knackered him, and he'll probably tell him himself, was the back pass rule. Because he had about size 13 feet. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be on the phone and help me, you know what I mean? So he's your goalie. So I need a defender. I said, oh, yeah, it's got to be Macker, hasn't it? Macker. Midfield. Oh, gee, mate. So you're I don't playing... even know what formation I'm playing. Well, it's five or six, so you're playing Bosnich, you're playing McGrath, then you've got your... <laughs> then you've got, then you've got utility players, aren't you? You can play anywhere. Yeah. Right? Enric. Right, so he's a definite. Oh, gosh, I. So who's your other two? Are we... Class and internationals as well, can we? Anybody you've played in a team with? Alan Shearer. 
England under 21, so... It's a technicality, you can get him in, he'll, can get him he'll in be delighted. Shearer. Shearer, Larson, you've got one more. Oh, we don't put ourselves in then? No, you can't put yourself in. That's Jeez, right. I need a midfielder then, <laughs> don't I? God. It'll probably be between Burley, Craig Burley and Mark Draper. Both of them better than Lubo? Now you've chucked a spanner in the works as well, Gordon <laughs> Bennett. Why don't I just play with no one at the back? Yeah, well, McGrath, McGrath gives you a chance to uh, win. Bosnich will save. He needs to roll the ball out anyway. So you've got Larson, got you've got Shearer. Is it definitely five aside? It's it? five aside. Uh, Why well, is it a squad game now? Isn't yeah. It? It's, it's, it's <laughs> more. You've got nine, you've got nine subs that are all like, I've got Bozzy. So yeah. Bozzy, McGrath. Maca. Right, Lubo. Henrik and Alan Shearer. That's a good five. And then Burley, Craig Burley and Mark Draper. So you've got seven. So it's a squad game. Yeah, right. So they would, all right. they would come on to help you. That five would actually stand you in good stead in any any competition. From my point of view, and I look at uh, the games that you've played in, is St Mirren's up there. Mm. Is there is there one in, uh, that you look back on with great fondness as well, out with that one? Because that one sets you into Celtic folklore. Ah, oh, it just... You know? No one remembers the injuries, no one remembers who managers or the, the bad times that we had when we were there. Yeah. When I'm doing do's, I've got one next week in Northern Ireland and they just talk about the goal. Which is great, isn't it? It's brilliant, aye. Yeah, I mean, if you've got an ultimate high uh, and a moment in life where everybody... Mm. But as a footballer overall, is there is there a game that you enjoyed out with that? That one sets you apart but but over your 19 about, years. Like, I, when I, as I said, I was 18, 19 at Notts County. Yeah. Winning two promotions via the playoffs. You nearly made it to the Premier League, am I right? Did well, we, uh, we, we did with Notts, which was the year before the Premier League started. Started, but, yeah. So and our first game was Man United away. Brian Robson like, won Went to the same school as him, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a bit younger than him. Before you start, we're in, <laughs> we in the same class and all that. So Mark Hughes playing against the batter. I think I touched the ball three times. But then you realise, like, wow, this is a 50, 60,000 Old Trafford. And then Villa, we play, we, when we won the League Cup, uh, we played Arsenal in the semis. Merson, Burkamp, Ian Wright. And you're like... And we drew 2-2 two, two away. We were 2-0 down after 20 minutes. And I would probably say uh, that was probably my best game for Villa. We got back to 2-2, two, two, Yorkies scored. And probably wanted to find him. Like, if I had scored it, it would have been probably the best goal I'd ever. I just hit this volley from about 30 yards, which hit the bar. And then it bounced in and Seaman got a touch onto the bar. And then Yorkie was following him. Seaman got up from where he was, how he saved it, I'll never know, yeah. and saved the rebound, but that was probably me, me best game that I, that I ever played in. Yeah, and in the final, you mentioned that your family were there for 2001. <laughs> were they all there for the League Cup? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had everyone. Uh, at Villa? Yeah. Yeah, everyone was, God, from Nottingham, from Newcastle, everyone went down, because they'd won it two years before, under Ron Atkinson against Man United. Yeah. Uh, but and then we had, we won that, and then we had the semi final of the FA Cup a week later. But and then against Liverpool, that was the time when they played Man United and had them in the final when Cantona scored and they had them white suits on. Yeah. Uh, was that ninety six? Ninety six. Yeah. We played at Old Trafford and Robbie Bowler scored Hardwick as he does. You're firing off some great names here. I was discussing with you the players that you played with that stick in mm. your mind that are special. What about the players you've played against? Give me a sense of uh, two or three that stick in your mind because you, th you know, it's great for you being a professional who's played mm. at the top level, but uh, are there players that you've sometimes watched and thought they're on another planet? Henrik's won fine, mm. everybody knows that, but are there other players? Against, that... we played, I think it was Palmer when I first joined Celtic pre-season. Lillian Turan played. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thinking, wow. French International. And you're just like, whoa, this is where we've got to try and get to be. Yeah. Never happened, but. <laughs> uh, and then when I played in England, like, 
Stuart Pearce at Forest, you wouldn't get away with hot, like especially nowadays. Because that notch, as I said, I had that free roll. So I used to always start on the right. Yeah. And we played Forest. And within the first five minutes, he booted us about 10 times. So I said, right, see you later. I was just about to say. I'm just going over the other side now. First tackle's free. Oh, well, he put you right and he just put you in the stand. <laughs> but would he get away with it now? No, but he probably could tail it now. So he'd make sure he'd win the ball. Yeah. Well, and in your role, in your position, is there a player that you played against that you thought, you know, outrageous, just a joy to watch? Well, Lubo, he was 33, 34 when he signed. Yeah. Two-footed. Just come in and just start bending balls in top corners with both feet, free kicks and corners, putting them on the sixpence. Strange, I can remember Celtic fans when he, when he first signed that, that Celtic got a corner and he, he went over and curled it in with his right foot and then 60 seconds later the corner was over the other end and he went over mm -hmm. <laughs> and curled it in with his left foot and I thought to myself <laughs> these supporters are looking they just couldn't believe the skill that he did have absolutely frightening yeah ridiculous I'll tell you what is good though is uh, despite all that your career you seem to have a really strong bond with those players uh, you mentioned that the, the qualities that they possessed that keep, kept you going in the dressing room but the friendships that last a lifetime that's why I'm over here this weekend, Peter. You know, I'll probably come over two, three times a year. Aaron Jackson, Gordon Marshall, Malky Mackay. You know, we just meet up, go out in Edinburgh, just have a laugh, basically. But you could, I seen Simon Donnelly and Jackie McNamara a month ago in Belfast. It's like we've never been away from each other. That's the thing. Uh, and we keep in touch. We do. Uh, and it's great. As you said, we'll have a laugh, we'll reminisce, take the mick out of each other. Yeah. That's how it should be. It's, it's one of those strange situations where it's very much like a family, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if you win and lose together. Mm. Is, there, is there moments of that period in Celtic, are there some crazy moments that you can reflect on that you can share with yeah, us? Well, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Apart from the really mad ones, is there, is there things Sports. in the dressing rooms that you... Oh. What was what was going through your head when you thought about the Henrik and the, and the Tosh situation? Because it was just brewing. Tosh was... Tosh, he looks back in it sometimes with a little bit of... Um, I, wish I, hadn't, I wish I hadn't get involved in it, you know, but... but I, I don't know if whoever you speak to about it, if it wasn't Tosh and Henrik, it might have been... It might mean someone else, because them, God bless, you know, we won the league and all that. But before then, it, 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 there was a split. Yeah, it well, was. It was like foreign the players and the British. Said, yes. Yeah, and it was just, and as I mentioned earlier, it just galvanised it. What if, if it wasn't empty, it would have been something else. Because the, God, the tackles that used to fly in the training, and because we weren't playing, I was yeah. never involved. It was like train Monday to Friday. See you Monday. And it was like that for about six or seven of us, which if you put yourselves in our position, Peter, no matter what you've done, you weren't involved. Yeah. You know, you could go and play for the reserves. The funny, <laughs> sorry, we were playing St. Johnson away uh, for the reserves. <laughs> and so I was laughing my head off. So I think we played Ross County early on in the weekend for Jack O's first game back after his uh, operation on his brain and I, th I think I scored a hat-trick and, and, and I would say to this day, I wish I could find it, I said to Malky last year when I went up and seen him at Dingwell, has anyone got that video of that game like because it was brilliant, cause first, Jack was first game back, I scored a hat-trick, Vim's not there, I think on the Wednesday night we played St Johnson away in the reserves so there'd be me, Jacko again, probably Marsh, Tosh was playing. It was right before half time. Tosh gets the ball left back, drives him, hit this worldy from about 30 yards in the top corner. <laughs> so we're all celebrating and Vim's at the game. And it was a minute before half time and, and <laughs> so walking off Tosh went, I bet he didn't even see it. He's probably gone downstairs for a steak pie. <laughs> and, we <were> like, <laughs> and that just summed us up, you know, that our group, yeah. which we were. What was the camaraderie like in the dressing room? Because I get the feeling from you guys, sledging was part and parcel oh. of it, absolutely slaughtering each other. Oh, whatever. Like, we had our group. I lived in Newton Mans. So you either lived in Newton Mans or Bodwell, if you're from Glasgow, and then obviously the Edinburgh lads, like Wack, Jacko and Marsh and Jackie McNamara lived over in Edinburgh. 
but it's the same for us, you're either in Bodwell or Newton Mains. So I lived in Newton Mains. So there was me, Burley was next door, Craig Burley. Morton was across the road, Big Johan, Jonathan Gould, I'm trying to think, Stubbsy. So you've got six there off the top of my head. And like obviously driving in together. Remember, <laughs> we were late one morning, me and I think me and Stubbsy, and I went from Newton Mearns, went the back way through the where the ground stadium was. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> right. The industrial estate. Yeah, no. Shawfield. Yeah, and yeah. I'm trying, I put my foot down a bit to get in. And then the police have followed us. And now I've gone. And the stop is right outside Parkhead, and Stubbsy's there. It was just us two. And he went, don't say anything to them. I went, all right. He says, just be calm and say it. Uh, so he comes out, winds the window down. I went, I says, why the, are you stopping me? I says, come on. I says, I'm doing 35 and a 30. I said, I wasn't going mad. I says, go and catch some murderers or some drug dealers or something like that. <laughs> Was that you not seeing anything? Aye, and then Stubbs, he just turned up <laughs> and he's gone, he's shaking his head like that. And he says, they used to call us Skell or Geordie or whatever. And he says, shut up. And I'm going, well, come on, man. I said, we're late for training. I says, how are you? And he's, policeman went, get out of the car. I went, oh, here we go. <laughs> And he says, listen, you don't need to speak to us like that. I says, I know I apologise. I says, but we're, we're being caught in traffic. I says, we're going to be late and I'll get fined. And I've just, you've just caught us at a bad moment. And he just went, right, see you later. And so I'm getting in the car and Stubbs is going, you idiot, what are you like? You know what I mean? But How lucky was that? I don't know, he's a Celtic <laughs> fan, I think. <laughs> you, could have been, you could have been huckled and off, got off. a fine. But the, as you said, the dressing room, you'd walk in. If you had dodgy gear on, you'd get hammered. You know, and... I think we positioned ourselves where, as you in the old dressing room, Marsh was at the bottom. I think Jacko and Gouldy were that side, and then you had me, Stubbsy at the back, Lambo, and then when Burley signed, he was next to us. Uh, and then after that, when Lenny, Neil Lennon, I haven't even mentioned Lenny God, when he signed, when Burles left, Lenny signed, and then he was sat next to us. So, and then you had Sutton. We know what he's like. You can see him on the telly now, and he. Yeah. I think he's just he just winds. We know what he's like, so you can see him on the telly. Just like he just chucks a couple of grenades in, doesn't he? And he yeah. Just... Absolutely. Um, just on that point, though, um, you mentioned all the players, and <coughs> I think it's great that you were talking about the fact that you still go uh, to some of the supporters' get-togethers. Were you surprised by the fanaticism of the fans? Because mm. even now, they still embrace you with great affection. Yeah. You know at the time when you sign how big it is. You know, Newcastle, it's only a couple of hours away and you knew it was Celtic Rangers. And then you signed for the club and it's wow. I think when I signed and, you, and then walked out to the front where the reception is and all that and there's 200, 300 people there and you're like, who would they come here? <laughs> oh, they come to see me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You all right? And, and you're like, until you've actually witnessed it or played for them, you can't comprehend it. Yeah. Were you in? Were you overawed in the early days or did you just think, this is the theatre, I brilliant. belong here? Yeah. yeah. If I was a little younger, I think I was 27 when I signed. So I'd done it. No, I'd went from Notts to Derby for big money then. Yeah. At 21. And from Derby to Villa, 23, 24. So, no, I embraced it. Obviously, couldn't wait. Just think, get me out, I want to. And especially because they were just building the stand to the left of the tunnel. They were just a new thing. I can't wait to play. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, you mentioned but, Tommy signing. You maybe not got as much time as you would have liked with him. Yeah. Um, but uh, having known him... For such a long period of time, I loved him because his patter was magnificent. So um, dry. Did you? Absolutely. Um, what are your What are your fond memories of him? Well, that first time when I met him was in the dressing room two, two and two and a half hours, three hours, just talking football. And I was like, wow. First and foremost, what a great bloke. Secondly, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then again, maybe not because he just signed me. So it was... But he's just his enthusiasm, got to know obviously his wife who was me and the kids. And oh, I was gutted, like absolutely gutted when he left. Yeah. I think it was three or four weeks after I'd signed. Yeah. I made the biggest decision in my career because when I was 
at Villa, Brian, uh, Brian Little had rang us up and said, I need to speak to you. And I was like, oh, God, I haven't done anything. What, what have I done? Yeah. And he said, because we used to live about five miles from each other in Nottingham, Leicestershire. And he said, come round, I need to speak to you. And I went, oh, God. And that's when he said, Celtic have come in for you. But because of the relationship we had, he says, I wanted to speak informally like this. Uh, but then when I signed him, when, when Tommy left, no, absent. And because when I signed, it was like, it was all negative. It was club in crisis and all that. And I'm going, what's, what's happened here? Yeah. Obviously, Rangers were going for 10 in a row. Uh, and I just thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? Yeah. Did you like uh, playing in the, the old firm games? Oh gosh, I, Yeah. What was your first thought? Give me your thoughts on the that. coin off the back of my head in the, first and, in the reserve game, I think we played <laughs> Bog Head or Ibrox. Getting a coin started off my head. But no, and there was 20, 30,000 there, I think. But no, I loved it. No, yeah. I didn't play that many. But I think the best one was when we'd already won the league and uh, and we went to Ibrox. Uh, oh, it was brilliant. You know, we'd already won it. Yeah. And then we battered them. Lubos, I think Lubo, I don't know if he scored a hard rick. Well, Neil Lennon tells a great story on that. Uh, basically, um, Lambert and Lennon are moaning that Lubo is not tracking any runners whatsoever. And it's Martin. Like Lenny to moan, though, is it? <laughs> just about to say. His recollection of it is Martin slaughters the two of them, including a Champions League winner, and says, just let him let do him his go stuff. On, and uh, he scored two in the second half. That was half. brilliant. Aye, so that was great. I used to room with Lenny when. I, when I first came it was Stubbsy and then when he left so I room with Lenny when he signed dear me so we could probably going back to the when we won the league against St Mary's so we, we used to be in a hotel even home games and away games the gaffer had this and we used to stay up at oh my god Dunblane yep Dunblane High Joe is it yeah yeah so we used to stay there so remember the game's 12 o'clock I love me kip <laughs> so I'm in bed like We'd have a game of cards with Robbo and all that, and a few of the lads, and then see a ten o'clock. Right, I'm gone. Bedtime for me. So I mean, Lenny's in the bath at twelve o'clock, midnight, all, with his music on and light. All the lights are on, and he's in his scale, and I'm going what? And he says we're going to win the league tomorrow, and I'm like, well, Lenny, let me get some sleep first, and then we'll <laughs> concentrate on that in the morning. You know what I mean? But as I said, you're going back to the camaraderie and. and that in a in a feeling that we're we're gonna do something and that just typifies of what Lenny said. We knew we were gonna win it against the moment. Nothing was gonna stop us. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there one one particular player that I um you know absolutely love. He's in my all time Scotland eleven um that you talk about with, you know, obviously great fondness is John Robertson. Yeah. Um Robbo for me as a player when I was a kid I just absolutely loved him off either foot. Mm. You know, Martin says over 100 yards, slowest guy ever, over five, could beat anybody. Um, it, it must have been, were you pinching yourself? I mean, Martin, okay, great, part of mm. that great forest side, but Brian Clough oh, said legend. to me, he was just, when I interviewed Brian Clough, he just said, Robertson. Number one. Number one. And Mark Draper, favourite player of all time, said exactly the same. So I knew, obviously, from... Nottingham, living in Nottingham for a year. Even when I went to Villa, I still lived there. Yeah. So until I moved to Celtic, I moved to Glasgow. But Robbo, class. So when Robbo came up, so in like you have the banner and all that. So we, have, we used to have a young viol on a Friday, and then the yellow bib. You you pick say if the old ones won, you'd pick one out the young ones, and they used to have to wear it, this yellow top. Everyone had signed it. So Robbo used to play for us on a Friday, and he used to have this old knee like I don't know what it would look. Like, it was like a tea towel, probably older than him, that he'd had for years. And he, and he used to just stand on the wing. We used to feed him the ball, and he'd do exactly the same. <laughs> and because the lads didn't know him and all that, and probably, some of them probably never knew what he'd done in his career, he'd give him the little shimmy, whip the ball in it all. He was class. He was, he was brilliant. And as I said, mentioned earlier, the gaffer had staff who we trusted, and he could let them get on with it. And obviously Rob or Wally, they were brilliant for him. And, yeah. and 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 we say it, we all say the gaffer was magnificent, but if he didn't have his stuff, tell me about your family. Is there someone that was a really huge influence on you? 
not really, no. My dad, my, my dad couldn't kick the ground, you know what I mean? It was... Uh, I've done something last week and the one about when you were a kid, when you played and all that. It was just... I remember at the back of ours when I was young, there was a field there and then the, like the housing estate was all around it. And then all the older players, all the older kids would play out and I, I just remember being up, looking out the window and going, oh, I wish I could go and play. And then they'd go, come on. So he, but they were all a lot older than me. So he had to be, your decision making had to be quicker. He had to be, well, well I was lucky I was quick yeah. to get away from us. You would get launched. And I think it just grew from there by playing against all the jumpers for goalposts. Everyone, you know, 15 aside on a small, and, and that's how I remember growing up and then playing for the school of, when I was seven or something like that, eight, and then. How did your mum and dad view the fact that this could be a career for you? I don't know if they, they did until later on. Yeah, they, obviously they were proud and all that. Yeah. Uh, but it was my dad, this, my mum was okay about us going to Nottingham. It was my dad who wanted us, you're not going. And then, but it was years later, and he said to the scout, and this is not my dad at all, I, I can imagine that era, hard, especially Newcastle, yeah. you know, uh, not tough on us, but like, you know, you respect everybody and all that. And I remember he said, the scout told us years later, you know, your dad actually said it was, uh, it was the best move for him. And that's not my dad. My dad wouldn't have said that to me. Yeah. But the scout told us. Brilliant. And then they used to come, yeah. They, they couldn't drive. They never drove. So I was getting buses when I was a kid. Yeah. Or people who, who I was playing for was picking us up and dropping us off. So I would say, would they have watched a dozen games when I was a kid? Probably not. But yeah. that was because they couldn't drive. Were you a person then, let me just touch on that then and say, were you a person then if you as a professional footballer, when you mentioned all those highs and you luckily enough said, my family were there. Were you a person who would wait on a word from your mum or dad saying, well done, we're proud of you? Or you no. just, no, no? I, it's, it's, I don't know, it's weird. It is weird, yeah, it is. Because you must have been, you must have been, it strikes me then that you are one of those guys who has got a lot of self-motivation. You know how some people need a lift, but you'd, no, I just got on with it, Peter, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, obviously, the course they were proud, you know, the, yeah. the, the, and they say it. But, uh, and it was like, it was a, not a chore getting them to games, but, right, and I was fortunate enough I could pay for them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And say, um, right, I need to sort of the train out or something, you know what I mean? Or get a bus here and get a train. Or if someone was coming up from Newcastle to Celtic, right, can you bring me mum and dad up, you know? Yeah. And I've got a younger brother as well, I was... I was, I went, I was, I was 15 when he was born. So, so you, then you've got to think about him as well. Yeah. Because he's only little and he was mascot a few times and all that. But you've got to think about things like that. And then, because they couldn't drive. So I would imagine if they could drive, they'd probably come, of course they would have come. Yeah, they followed you a lot along. Long. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I've got a couple of things to ask you before you finish. You've been in a bit of trouble, obviously, because you've named five and your mates will be absolutely slaughtering you because they've been left out of the five-a-side team. So what we do on this programme is say you're on a road trip, you're in the car, you're driving, and you have to take three people, famous, living or dead, with you in the car. Who's going in the car with you? Where are we going, first and foremost? You get down the Route 66 in America. Oh, yeah. You've got the music on, and you've got three people that you think would be good on the trip. Uh, Peter K. Okay. <laughs> Got a laugh. <laughs> right. Oh, man, absolutely. He's top, top draw. Tiger Woods. Right. Just... Golf stories? I love golf. I absolutely love loads of sport. Yeah. Love golf. We have to take a woman on it. We can't have three blokes. <laughs> Most people have a woman in the car. Definitely got to have a woman in. <laughs> Who do I like when I was growing up? Shania Twain. Yeah. Oh, she was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> what, a, what a car that is. Yeah. Shania Twain, Tiger Woods and Peter Kay. And me. Yeah, and you. That is one heck of a car, by the way. I can see And if it, it was a three of the lads who I would be taking, it was probably the three of the lads who I'm going to see this weekend, isn't it? So yeah. Jack O'Malley and Marsh. 
Yeah, that would be a, that would be one heck of a road trip with those three in it as well. well if you bring your cameras to uh, Edinburgh tomorrow night, Pete, you can see what it's like. <laughs> if, if I walked in, <laughs> if I walked into that restaurant where you four are, are sitting down, it would be an absolute hoot. Listen, it's been a, it's been a joy because I loved rolling back the years with you um, and savouring some of the moments that some I've witnessed, some I didn't. I had to actually go and look at a few goals along the way, but some of the memories have been an absolute joy. Tommy Johnson, yeah. thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Top Cheers. man.